Now, what properties must such a cause of the universe possess? Well, by the very nature of the case, as the cause of space and time, this entity must transcend space and time and therefore must exist timelessly and non-spatially, at least without the universe. This transcendent cause must therefore also be immaterial and changeless, since anything that is timeless has to be changeless, and anything that is changeless has to be immaterial, since material things are constantly changing, at least on the molecular and atomic level. Such a cause must be beginningless and uncaused, since there cannot be an infinite regress of causes. Um, this entity must be unimaginably powerful, since it created the universe without any material cause. It created the matter and energy itself. Finally, and most remarkably, such a transcendent first cause is plausibly personal. Let me give two reasons why I think this is a personal creator. First, the personhood of the first cause is implied by its timelessness and immateriality. You see, the only entities that we know of that can possess those properties are either abstract objects, like numbers, or else a an unembodied mind or consciousness. But abstract objects don't stand in causal relations. The number seven, for example, doesn't have any effects on anything. And therefore it follows that the transcendent cause of the universe must be an unembodied mind or consciousness. Secondly, this same conclusion is implied by the origin of an effect with a beginning from a timeless cause. We've concluded that the beginning of the universe must be the effect of a first cause. Now by the very nature of the case, that cause cannot have any further cause because there cannot be an infinite regress of causes. It is simply a beginningless, uh, timeless, changeless, first, uncaused cause. Now, when you think about it, that's extremely odd. If the cause is permanently present from eternity and is sufficient for its effect, then why doesn't the effect also exist from eternity? How could the cause exist eternally, but the effect only come into being just a finite time ago? If the necessary and sufficient conditions for the effect are eternal, then why isn't the effect eternal as well? How can the cause exist without its effect? Well, it seems to me there's only one way out of this dilemma, and that is to say that the cause of the universe's coming into being is a personal agent who is endowed with freedom of the will and who can therefore bring about a spontaneous new effect without any sort of prior determining conditions. Philosophers call this kind of causation agent causation. And because the agent is free, he can initiate new effects um, which were not previously present. He can bring about new conditions. So a finite time ago, a creator endowed with freedom of the will could freely bring the universe into being at that moment. And in that way, the creator could exist changelessly and eternally, but create the world with a beginning in time. By exercising his causal power, he brings it about that a world with a beginning comes to exist. So the cause is eternal, but the effect is not. So in this way, and I think this way alone, it's possible to have an effect with a beginning arise from an eternal cause, namely through the free will of a personal creator. So this argument, if successful, leads to the existence of a personal creator of the universe who is uncaused, beginningless, changeless, immaterial, timeless, spaceless, and unimaginably powerful.